Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at this drawing code assignment that asks you to draw the clouds and the sky and the ground. And we're going to look at specifically the fact that we're not asking you or trying to teach you to become like this expert cloud drawer in Python. Instead, the point that we're really trying to get across here is how you can create a function that lets you build something reusable. How can you separate the part that needs to stay the same every time you use the function from the part that should change every time you use the function? So I'm not going to talk about this uh, starter code very much. This part basically just creates the window that you're going to draw in. And then this piece right here uh, just creates a blue oval kind of as an example. So we're going to ignore all that. Um, the thing you need to know about this draw scene function is that it gives you these five parameter values, the canvas that you're going to draw on, and the four coordinates of the left, top, right, and bottom edges of the screen. So if I print those four coordinates, I'll just copy and paste these so we can see them, I can see that the left and top values are zero. So we always start in computer drawing. We almost always start with zero, zero in the top left corner. The right side, it, the values increase as we move to the right, just like in geometry. The x-axis goes, in this case, from zero to 799. And the y-axis is opposite of geometry. It increases as we go down. So it starts at zero at the top, and then it increases to 599 it says. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a little function to draw a grid on that screen. So I'm going to create a function called draw grid and this is just going to help me to be able to uh, visualize where different things are going to be but it's also going to illustrate this idea of how can we use a function to do different things. So this function is going to be using the create line function of my canvas. And I shared the link to this documentation on Slack. Um, I like this documentation a little bit better um, just because all the create functions are here. And I also like the uh, way it describes the parameters. So when I click on this, it tells me that the create line function, it's got these four required parameters. The first two are the X and Y coordinates of where the line begins. And the second two are the X and Y coordinates of where the line ends. So let's do an example here. Now to draw on the canvas, I need the canvas itself. But this function, as we talked about in class, this function doesn't have access to variables that were created in other functions. And so I need to add that as a parameter. I need to make sure this function gets this canvas object. And so I'm going to then say I want to create a line and I'm just going to create one from 0, 100 to, we'll say, all the way across. So according to this, my right side of my screen is 799. And we'll just do it like this. Okay. Now if I run this, nothing's going to happen. Because even though I've defined this function, I haven't called the function. The only function that's being called right now is my draw scene function. So here, Inside my draw scene function, instead of printing my coordinates, I'm going to call this draw grid function and give it the canvas. Okay, so now when I run that, here's that scene function being run, which calls draw grid, the draw grid function. And the draw grid function creates this line from 0, 100 to 799, 100. Okay, now what I want to actually do here is I want to create a series of lines going across. And so since I'm going to be repeating this process, I'm going to use a loop for that. And then I'm going to use another loop to create a series of lines going uh, across from left to right. Okay, So I'm going to draw all my horizontal lines first. Now, the question is, how many lines do I draw? It could be that I want to line every 100 pixels, or maybe I want to line every 200, or every 50, or every pixel. So this is an example of something that might change depending on how I'm using the function. And so I'm going to add a parameter here called grid spacing. And this is how 
far apart I want my lines spaced. The other thing that I need to know is how big to make these lines. I need to know the width and height of the screen. And so to get that information, I can get that from this function because this function has that already, just like it had the canvas. So I'm going to ask for the left, top, right, and bottom values okay, in my function. And so when I call draw grid, if I try to run this now, it's going to give me an error because it says, let me add this comma here. So if I try to run this now, it's going to tell me that I'm missing some positional arguments. I'm expecting five, but I'm only giving it one. So I'm going to give it the others. I need to give it the left value, the top value, the right value, the bottom value, and I need to tell it how far apart to make my grid. Uh, I'm going to say for now, I want my grid to be 100 pixels in size. So I'm going to have that function be called from draw scene, and I'll just move this down here underneath this comment. Okay, okay. so now I'm going to use these values that I'm receiving. Okay, so now this works, but it's still just drawing that one line, right? So let's change that. What I want to do is create a loop here. And I'm going to use the form of the loop that lets me have a starting position, an ending position, and a step value. So if you don't know what that looks like, normally I can say I want to do a loop like this. And if I print i, it'll go from 0 to 9. But I can also say I want to start at a certain position. I want to start at 5 and go to 20. And it'll go up to, but not including, that end value. But I can also say I want to count by twos, for example, and then it will skip and only count by twos until it gets to that position. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to start, and since I'm drawing across the screen, these are my horizontal lines, and so since I'm drawing horizontal lines, I'm going to start here and draw a line and then draw a line and draw a line and draw a line and draw a line. So I want to start at the top and go towards the bottom. So I'm going to start at the top of the screen. I'm going to go until the bottom of the screen. And how often do I want to draw a line? I want to draw it according to this grid spacing parameter, every 100 pixels in this case. Okay. So now when I create my line inside this loop, instead of start saying start at 0, I'm just going to say start at the left edge of the screen. I'm going to start on the left side, and the Y position that I'm drawing right now, that's going to be in this I parameter, because I'm moving from top to bottom, and wherever I currently am, that's here. And so I'm going to start here, I'm going to end my line on the right edge of the screen, and when I end it, I want my Y value for this side to also be that same I value. Okay. So if I run this, now I've got a series of lines, each 100 pixels apart, going from the left edge of the screen to the right edge. So the way this works is I'm going to loop from the top of the screen to the bottom, and the top and bottom values are given to me in this function, and I pass them on to my draw grid function, and I say I want to loop from top to bottom, skipping based on grid spacing, and I said grid spacing should be 100. If I change grid spacing to 50, then my lines will be 50 pixels apart. If I change it to be 400, then my lines will be 400 pixels apart. And there's not enough pixels to show that. So here's what 200 pixels apart looks like. And I can make them as close together as I want. So close together that it just looks like one solid mass. Or where there's just one little space between each line. Okay. So I'm going to leave this at 100 for now, just to make my grid. Now I'm going to do the same thing with vertical lines, but this time, so I'm going to have another loop. This time, since I'm drawing, I'm starting here and I'm drawing a line, then drawing a line, then drawing a line, I'm starting on the left and I'm going to end on the right. So I'm going to start on the left, 
end on the right, and I'm going to continue to use grid spacing as the space between the lines. And then I'm going to tell it to create a line. And again, remember that I need to specify the x and y values of the starting point and the x and y values of the ending point. So my x value in this case is going to be what's changing because I'm going to start here and then go here and then go here, etc. So my x value will be i. My starting position for the y value will be the top of the screen. My x value at the end, since I'm drawing a straight line, is going to be the same x value, i. And my y value at the end is going to be the bottom of the screen. So when I run that, now I've got this grid. I'm going to do one more thing to make this so that I can tell what, these what this grid represents. I'm going to add another statement here called create text. And if I go back to my documentation, I can see the create text, the way it works is I specify the x and y value where the text should start. And then one of the options is the text that I want to display there. So for my horizontal lines, I want my text to display over here on the left, just kind of right next to the line. So for now, let's do this like this. I'll say your X position should be the left side of the screen, your Y position should be wherever the line is, and your text should be, and I'm going to use a format string for this, and just say whatever the position of the line is. I'm going to print that out. Okay. So now if I print this, if I run this, you can see all I can see is this zero. And you can kind of see there's a little bit of text cut off. And so what I'm going to do is add a margin to that left side. So I'm going to create a variable in here called text margin, and I'm going to set that equal to 20. So I'm going to say draw it on the left of the screen, but shift it over a little bit so that we can see it. Okay. So now I can see these numbers here, but if I look, my zero is still cut off by the top. And so I'm going to add that text margin also to the top. And so now I can see this is zero, this line's 100, this line's 200. And maybe I don't want the vertical margin to be as much, so I can go in here and say I want this to be the text horizontal margin and then add another variable to be my vertical margin. Maybe I'll make that 10. And so I'll shift it over to the left by the horizontal margin and I will shift it down by the vertical margin. So now it's a little closer to the line, a little easier to see. Okay. And so I can do the same thing for my vertical lines. I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to have my X position be wherever the line is. And I'm going to have my vertical position be the top of the screen plus the vertical margin. And once again, I want my text itself to be whatever the value of the line is. In this case, I'm not going to use the horizontal margin because I'm just going to leave that centered right on the line. Okay? So now I've got this grid. And the point here, well, first of all, the grid may help me to line up objects because now I can draw a circle. I can say, okay, now that I've drawn my grid, I want to say canvas, create circle, or create oval, rather, and I want it to be at this location. Okay, and I can see that my circle fits neatly inside 100, 100 to 200, 200 based on my grid. Maybe I'll shift this over a little. And then I can see that I'm drawing on top of the grid. Maybe I want the grid to show up on top so that I can still line objects up. And so I'll just draw everything behind the grid. And then when I'm all done getting everything lined up, I can just say, don't draw the grid anymore, and I'll just have my circle. So by putting all of this into a function, we do a few things. 
First, it makes it easy to say, I want to do this whole bit of code either before or after this part. And I can just move this one function call to control that. I can also turn that whole section of code on and off just by removing or adding this function call. Also, because I'm allowing my function to have these parameters, and I'm basing all of the drawing off of those parameters, I can control how my code works just by changing the parameters in the call that I make to the function. Okay, So all kinds of interesting things we can do here.